If you're not aware of Dr. Slump, you're going to struggle today. That's right everyone, Dragon Ball Super Episode 69 came out yesterday, and um, there's a lot of Toriyama fan service here. Goku vs. Arale, a ridiculous battle that will end the Earth? Hint, it won't. But let's have a bit of fun before Hit gets here, alright? So not only do we get the Dragon Ball Super intro as we usually do, we actually get the Dr. Slump intro as well. Remastered, reanimated, and rescored. That's a very nice little easter egg there. I always like 80s intros, it's just something about them that has a lot of charm and mystique. I dig it. This salute to the original series intro then leads us into the introduction, or I should say reintroduction, of Senbei Noremaki, the inventor of Penguin Village and the creator of Arale, the mascot of the show, and pretty much most of Toriyama's work prior to Dragon Ball. He's off to West City where Capsule Court is located, and he decides to not bring Arale and Gachan, those little two little spirit things who are actually angels and have a tendency to eat stuff, behind in the village. Ooh, that's a sad robot. If they were actually children, I'd be screaming neglect right about now. So where is Senbei headed off to? Why, the World Inventors Award, which is presented by Mr. Satan, because everything in this world is presented by Mr. Satan. Hail Satan. Hmm, that hall looks way too empty for a World Inventors Award. There's like six tables, not all of them fully occupied, and seven reporters. At least make it look busy! You could have just copy and pasted a few other tables there! Come on. Well that, I just scream OBJECTION! Oh, no wait, it's Goku. Oh. Huh, that's just precious. Just because a Saiyan's hair is impossible to cut, doesn't mean it can't be subdued by hair gel. At least, for a period of time. Why is Goku at a convention for smart people? Well, he's working the doors, of course. After Chi Chi suggested, no he demanded, him get a part time job, and Mr. Satan scored him one. It's not worthwhile enough because Goku tears his jacket and then calls it a day. Oh, Goku. On to the winner, and it's not Bulma this time. It's actually Senbei Noromaki himself, and he's making the most of that free food. Don't we all? Don't we all? So, what is this invention that has outclassed Capsule Core? Pretty much the only technology company in the world. Well, it's the reality machine number two. And what does it look like? It looks like a chamber pot on a serving dish had babies and it's wearing Japanese clogs. Okay. And it's completely sentient. Yeah, that's pretty much normal for Toriyama. If you're not familiar with the Dr. Slump humor, this is going to seem a bit weird and you're not going to get it. But yeah, this, this does check out. All right, so what does this reality machine do? Well, if you're familiar with the phrase, make something out of nothing, it's basically that. Senbei, for example, desires for a sexy magazine, and he gets it almost instantaneously. What does Mr. Satan want? He wants a keyring of himself! Yep, I did laugh. Why is it that Dragon Ball Super makes the most sense when it's trying to be funny? Oh, look at those reporters, they seem so happy. One reporter, in fact, looks so happy that his eyes are melting and he's lost his nose. And Trunks looks so happy that he's doing two frame frame gestures! I know, I'm so happy too! While this is going on, a Spike Spiegel lookalike is approaching the stage, muttering, Rejection. Rejection. REJECTION! Oh, sorry, sorry. Goku, slick back hair and Phoenix, right? Lookalike costume, kind of, I got reminded about that, sorry. It turns out to be Dr. Mashirito, Senbei's ultimate rival and nemesis from the TV series. In fact, quite a lot of people have forgotten about it, I forgot about it, and even Dr. Slump himself forgot about it, because he has to check the manga actually in the anime. So it seems like he's dead. So, how did he escape hell? Well, he just did. Just, just because. Maybe he escaped hell during the Fusion Reborn movie! Let's make the DBZ movies canon like I did in that one video! Plug. Alright, so what is his invention slash dastardly plan? He's just there to present his formula, which makes a child's desire to play increase a hundredfold. And he's planning to use it on Arale. He wheels out Arale and Gachan at that very moment, and they do nothing but cause havoc and eat the stage. Again, this is all normal to Dr. Slump. Vegeta, a little help? Yeah, oh, he got whomped. In fact, he got whomped so hard it woke Goku from his important nap and where did he get his gi? Vegeta, he can't take a rally's strength. It's too ridiculous. So Vegeta 
has to get silly. But she kind of cracked the planet in two. Shouldn't that cause some kind of geological cataclysm? Oh, right, sorry. I forgot. We're in a gag episode. Nothing makes sense. Okay, moving on. After it looks like Vegeta's blasting off again, Goku suddenly remembers Arale from his childhood. Arale did actually show up in Dragon Ball during the Red Ribbon Army saga, so this does ring true. Can Goku take her? Mm, he doesn't feel right for some reason. Nor does he look right. Can Beerus take her? Well, no, you're not going to get that MacGuffin just yet because he's fast asleep. Well, it turns out we're in deep doo-doo. Literally deep doo-doo. The only thing that can distract Arale right now is poop. And it's up to the reality machine and trunks to, uh, deliver the goods. And no internet, there was no time skip, trunks was just animated awkwardly. Okay, that's bought some time, but they need to think of a better plan. And what better option, because it's Dragon Ball, than to get everyone else to do the work for you with a culinary spirit bomb. Bomb returns the camera to the reality machine and they have to share their favorite foods with it. And it works and you get like a gelatinous whopper? But it's enough to wake Beerus up and then destroy Dr. Mashirito like he did with Zamasu. But this cat's got a wicked tummy ache, so he has to quickly go home before he can destroy some fools. And so we say goodbye to Senbei, Arale and everyone else. Except Vegeta, who is just hanging around. Cut to credits, Looney Tunes style. Okay, I will admit, even though the Goku Arale fight turned out to be nothing but a couple of beam struggles, this was a pretty fun episode. It was cute. We knew it was going to be something inane and totally stupid. That's just Toriyama's style when you go back to his roots. And it works, somehow. I think if you quickly research on the internet what Dr. Sump's basic motifs are, you can get this episode enough to enjoy it. If you don't, then you're just gonna be doing harm to yourself. As for me, this just makes me want to pick up Dr. Slump again and urge Funimation to get the license for the series. Even the original series, the 1997 remake, I don't care. Just get Dr. Slump out there before you get to this episode in the dub. The animation was off in several places, but since this was a gag episode, I'm gonna let it pass. I would imagine that they're probably focusing their animation efforts on the new arc that's coming in about ooh, two weeks from now. In the end, this episode was just harmless fun, a nod to the Dr. Slump series of the 1980s and just Toriyama's other work. And Arale is an iconic character. You may not think so in the West, but in Japan, she's a classic. Anyway, that was my review for Dragon Ball Super Episode 69. Tune in next time for my review of Episode 70. Until then, be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, guys. Catch you later.